All right, the next step in this lower ball joint project is to press out the old ball joint and then press in the new one. There's the new one there. You can see uh, it's pressed in from the bottom and uh, there's these grooves here that fit up inside the, um, the lower control arm and it's just a press fit. So obviously uh, to get the old one out we have to press it out going down that way. Uh, you can rent or buy these uh, ball joint press tools. Uh, you can see there's various different fittings. Basically what, um, what we need to do is, in this particular kit anyway, there's a, it's like a collar. Um, it's an adapter for pressing out. You see this, uh, this goes over top of the ball joint right there and it's going to press the ball joint down from that surface and it fits nicely o fully over the uh, the shaft there um, and then uh, that tool sort of rides in there and then on the bottom on well, the receiving end because it's being pushed out this way you have to find there's these various adapters here and you find the appropriate size that will fit over the ball joint because you want the ball joint to obviously slip inside of here. It's going to be pushed out. Uh, so on this particular one we need the biggest the biggest one that the kit comes with. It just kind of sits like that so it's going to allow the ball joint to press out. Uh, and then there's this other adapter here which is tapered so it fits all of the different adapters but um, just sits in there like that and then the press tool is gonna go kind of just ride in there uh, like that it's actually this this little piece fits in there as well so that kind of just sits in there so it can't move around so uh, it's kind of awkward to do this you're gonna slip this over here and then get this uh, I'm gonna crank this so it actually fits. It's just kind of a, oh shit. Let's get this thing cranked up a little bit first. Just enough so we can slide this in here. But also, oh, we get this up like this. There we go. Now it's not going anywhere. Except for this end is. Tight space here today. And make sure that stays seated there, like that. There. Now, uh, so that's all in there. It looks like it's pressing pretty evenly straight down. This is like this. This is good. This is good. Okay. As awkward as that looked, <laughs> um, it's all tight now. So now, oh, let's turn it upside down. As we crank. As we crank down on on this seven eight seven eighths inch socket and a breaker bar, you might need an even bigger breaker bar. You see what's happening is this is spinning down, pushing down on here, which is putting upward force here, which is putting force on the ball joint, which is going to Hopefully, if things go well, press the ball joint out into this receiving cup. So we'll put it on the ground uh, so I can get a little more leverage. On a car, it might be even a bit easier because it's if the control arm's attached to the car, it's probably a bit easier. But obviously, if we try to put too much torque on this thing right now, it's just going to spin on the bench. So I'm going to put it on the ground and stand on it. All right. So, to keep this thing from moving around, I'm just going to step on it while I turn this. Um, whenever things are under tension like this, I don't know, it's maybe a bit paranoid, but I'm going to wrap it with this. I figure if something breaks, 
like if one of these metal cups breaks or something, which they're not designed to do, but there's so much force. If it does, I'd rather have it hit that towel before it, uh, before it hits me. I don't know what, if that really makes a difference, but it makes me feel better. Um, I've got this electric impact I'm going to try. Uh, my other impact is at the other shop. But this one's pretty good. It produces pretty good torque. Um, it's a lot easier than trying to reef on a breaker bar. It's turning slowly. <laughs> I think. Maybe it broke loose or something broke. There, I popped it out. That's great. So that's how you do it. Excellent.